It is Tuesday the 13th of August. I'm your host Ryan Keir and this is the Quantum Cast. Alright, so it's 6.59am. We have one minute until the news flow starts pouring in. And a couple of companies reporting today include Plus500, AA and Menzies Group. So we'll keep an eye out for those at the moment. So let's get into today's focus stocks. We have a trading statement from Card Factory PLC. Half year results from Menzies. A disposal of Hydrodeck Group's Australian plant. Clough Natural Resources PLC mentioned that they've completed their farm out license P2437 to Shell UK Limited. And finally, Plus 500 released their interim results. Okay, so beginning with Card Factory PLC, they released a trading update and one headline shows that they have robust sales and that is in a very challenging consumer environment with all the fiasco going on at the moment of Brexit and individuals trying to shop around to get the best value. A lot of businesses have been struggling because they have had unsustainable supply chains. Say a supplier comes to you one day and says, look, I can't make this delivery of manufacturers goods you require. But then again, they do sell greeting cards, dressings and gifts. They aren't selling manufacturing equipment. So this kind of thing is likely not a large proportion of one's income. If somebody's buying this, it doesn't really cost that much, a couple of pounds maybe to get a card or a little bit of a dressing, or a little gift for somebody. But besides the point, the company has reported total group sales growth of 5.5% and it's up from the previous half by 2.5%. They've expanded their store network as well with 26 new stores being opened. There isn't a specific mention here about leasehold or whether they are freehold properties being acquired. Most of them are always leasehold. Some are maybe sale and lease back depending on what the company's plan is. But at the moment they've mentioned they have a total UK estate of 991 stores. So I assume that the majority of these are owned by them, if not all of them, by the wording used at least. So the company has strong operating margins and relatively low capital expenditure requirements, which is impressive. They have mentioned that they are highly cash generative in this situation, many companies, as I've mentioned, due to the macroeconomic environment from trade, are actually struggling to profit in their business activities. But these guys are still doing really well. One thing that does stand out to me, though, is that they paid a full year 2019 final dividend of £21.9 million, but the company's net debt had gone from £159.8 million in the 31st July 2018 to something like £170 million. So their net debt has increased by about £10 million in the period. A lot of companies that are paying dividends and are having increases in their net debt, in my opinion, are doing the wrong thing. You don't really need to return that value to shareholders. I always wonder if a company admits that they wouldn't be able to use those funds for a better reason, then they're not really a great company to invest in. But then again, you see it across many companies of this nature in the sector and in different sectors, in fact, not just in retail or gifts specifically. You've seen Centrica pay an unsustainable dividend of 12 and a half pence per share when their earnings per share was at like 10 pence per share. And yet management still proceeded in paying this dividend, this dividend that was simply unsustainable. I mean, there's nothing amazing in this report as the company mentions that they anticipate profits for the full year to be broadly in line with its previous expectations. So whether it's slightly above or slightly below, that's probably where the price action will be weighted in. I don't expect an amazing reaction to this, but uh, a lot of individuals lost faith in companies such as card factories so would likely be surprised that they're still making growth and are still making a profit. Moving on to 
John Menzies PLC, not to be confused with the Menzies in the US. That is quite a popular fast food chain or desserts place for many. This company, in fact, John Menzies PLC, is an aviation company and they have reported their half year results for the six months ended the 30th of June 2019 with a revenue up by about 20 million pounds, operating profit down with the company reporting a net loss of 4.4 million pounds for the period in comparison to an 8.3 million pounds profit in the half year back in 2018, the first half. That's not impressive. The company has mentioned that their first half results are impacted by business losses in half two of 2018. Weak cargo volumes and the grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. This likely is an example, in fact, on the contrary to the last company we mentioned, Card Factory. John Menzies PLC have been taking a hit on their performance and their business activities as a result of global uncertainty, but more specifically uncertainty within the European area and United Kingdom. The company's shares have been in a downtrend since I believe highs at around 487 pence per share on May the 21st, and the price closed yesterday at 415 on mid, I believe. Actually, no, 419 pence per share. So the shares haven't been doing so well recently. The company's mentioned that they've given a dividend per share of six pence. That is not a great idea, at least in my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, paying a dividend when you're not making a profit in every single quarter shouldn't really exist because if your actions aren't profitable all the time, yes, I know some businesses are seasonal, for example, as we've mentioned in a couple of podcasts before, and with On The Beach Group, their business is seasonal. So yeah, if they are profitable on an aggregated basis, but if there's a period where they're at a loss and say they have to meet some of their payments, but they think, oh no, actually we've got to pay the shareholders first a dividend and then we're going to focus on keeping the lights on, that's ridiculous. I mean, Centrica set themselves a really high standard to meet and their business was declining because their prices were so high relative to new competitors in the market. You have to always keep updated with the trend. And in this case, these higher dividends aren't really a great idea. And for those who believe that this period of slow growth for John Menzies PLC is just a one-off, you can look into the underlying operating profit, which is down about three million pounds. It is at 17.9 million pounds. Once again, all of these exceptional net costs and additional expenses to the company do add up and do restrict them from performing further. Okay, now moving on to Hydro Debt Group PLC. This company is a clean tech industrial oil re-refining group. They had a plant in Australia. They've mentioned that they are actually going to dispose those assets to receive a net figure of 1.7 million Australian dollars after estimated decommissioning and transportation costs. So the company will have, say, at least a million and 100,000 pounds in proceeds out of all of this. What I do find quite odd here is that the company buying this is called Green Bottle, and they are owned by Andrew Black or controlled by Andrew Black, a non-executive director and a major shareholder of the company Hydrodeck PLC. So I wonder what the true meaning of this is. All I do remember is that Andrew Black had given a loan, I believe, to the company or at least I think he would give the company money, this is Hydrodeck Group PLC, and then he would receive a certain amount of shares from the company. Oh, but it shows here that uh, 
the anticipated net proceeds will actually be used to pay off outstanding liabilities on their Australian operating entities, which is not the nicest thing. People would have thought that's cash for the company. I do remember Hydrodeck had a fire quite a while ago in their facility in Canton, Canton in Ohio. And the performance of the shares since then hasn't been good at all. In fact, they had a consolidation to up their shares as they were getting to about the sub one pence per share level. The current market cap's about 14 million pounds and the shares are around 50 pence, but post consolidation, that makes them down around 30, 40% from that one penny level. So they would have been something like 0.7 pence per share in old terms for those who were previous investors and haven't followed it since the consolidation. There's also a hidden royalties agreement for Hydrodeck. 5% of revenues derived from the Australian operations that are sold to Green Bottle. So they don't really have any cost in this situation. And it's also subject to a minimum charge in year four of 30,000 Australian dollars rising to 150,000 Australian dollars in year eight. So the company is effectively securing income for the long term, which is impressive. But at the moment, they now have one less asset and they seem to have sold it for less than what the value was to their investors. I mean, for 1.7 million, the company has many more liabilities on there. I would be interested to see if selling this asset reduces their liabilities by more than the figure paid for the asset. That would be a win for the company if they could reduce 4 million odd worth of debt and receive this cash that would then go to pay off more debt. These shares aren't really of interest though. The majority of the time we see such consolidations in the share capital, it's very likely that there will be placings following. And this company has a wide background of placings. Okay, so moving on to Clough Natural Resources, this company has completed their farm out of a license to Shell UK. The company will receive $600,000 as an initial consideration. Quite a princely sum, in fact, from Shell within 30 days of completion. What I can also see is that Shell will pay for 75% of the cost of an exploration well, including testing, subject to an aggregate cap of $25 million. So the 75% of the $25 million figure, which is $18 million and $700 $45,000. So Clough would have to cough up the rest of the money, yet they currently have that 600000 to keep them going. I can only assume that uh, the company's cash balances will either cover it. If they don't cover it, they'll have to have a placing. But in this situation, they are working with a super major like Shell. So it isn't just a normal oiler. So I assume that a lot of people would put up the money and see how this drill goes because exploration wells, as we'd seen yesterday with Eco Atlantic and Talo Oil, some of the owners, Total Energy was another owner of uh, some of the block in, I believe, Ghana. That was a prospect there. And it had quite a lot of net pay, something like 50 million barrels of net pay. For the long run, this is a highly positive RNS from Clough Natural Resources. But once again, for it to succeed in the long run, there has to be additional capital put up by Clough because I don't think their $600,000 can cover it. But still, in the short run, this is also positive news. It could be taken in a different way, dependent on if the company were to say use an existing debt facility, say a revolving credit facility, instead of placing. And investors would love that. The final detail we need to just cover is that Clough will retain a 50% working interest and Shell has also been assigned the other 50%.
of the interest in license P2437. And finally, not the most amazing results from plus 500. I see them right in front of me where revenues in comparison to half to 2018 are down 42 percent the company's revenues have collapsed from half one goodness me they're down 68 percent from half one 2018 half one 2018 had them at a revenue of 465 million dollars half two had them at 254 million dollars and half one 2019 which is the most recent bit of data that we have here is 148 million. Not impressive at all. EBITDA down 58% compared to the previous half. Net profit down 56% compared to the previous half. The majority of this is because cryptocurrency trading volumes have decreased and regulations on leverage have also been upped so that uh, individual investors and retail investors, well, more specifically individual investors, are now limited to certain uses of leverage. The company have mentioned that their new customer numbers are something like 23% above quarter one in quarter two. And that's like 2,000 odd more people. In fact, sorry, 4,000 odd more people. They gained about 47,500 new customers in half one 2019 have mentioned though a really interesting statistic that the active customer numbers are standing at 141,000 but note that this is a decrease in comparison to half to 2018 where they had about a thousand more active customers nothing too shabby though I believe that uh, a lot of those individuals who got in on the cryptocurrency hype had given a lot of revenue growth for plus 500 back in 2018 specifically when futures for Bitcoin as an example had spiked at around $20,000 now they're about half that but irrespective of price trading volumes have decreased in cryptocurrencies as there are so many different ones that people have looked at and individuals haven't got their quote-unquote quick returns that they used to get before there was a period back in 2018 where someone would buy into cryptocurrencies with no investment rationale and they'd potentially double a month or so later because there was so much volume right now the volume has really just fallen off a cliff especially in bitcoin futures the company has mentioned that the group did quote unquote perform well during what was a difficult period for the entire industry and financial markets were stable providing a limited number of trading opportunities for customers. They've also mentioned that they're on track to meet their current expectations for 2019. This is quite a rough start though, nevertheless. You look at IG, their results haven't been as bad. In fact, they've been much better than expected, yet uh, Plus 500 have failed to exceed expectations. They've been known as a company in the past to exceed expectations, obviously before the last car crash report. They had highs of around £20 per share, and now they've kind of fallen off a cliff to around £6, I believe. Uh, yet, this RNS could be taken badly. However, they didn't make a loss, so we'll have to see what investors really think of this. At the moment, my thoughts are it is almost similar to the ASOS trading update a while ago, where profits had been slashed around 60-70%. They still made money but they didn't make as much as before. And in fact, they'd slashed their forecast. In this case, the company hasn't slashed their forecast. Plus 500 have net cash that has been increasing by about 4% from the previous half, but is down from half one 2018. In half one 2018, they had cash of $511 million, and now it's at $327 million. And that wraps up today's episode of the Quantium Cast. But if you want insight into the technical side, then once again, keep your eyes peeled for any additional content posted later on in the day, including analysis of charts of companies discussed in this podcast. But first, head on over to our site, quantumresearch.co.uk, and download the relevant chart pack for this episode. I've been your host, Ryan Kier. Until next time.